Hello and welcome to Real Economy. In this episode, we look at the economic tools that the EU is triggering in order to tackle the massive challenges of this coronavirus crisis. We visit Poland to see how this reallocated money is helping health workers and we interview the leading economist Thomas Wieser to discuss how significant this kind of support is. But first, let's see what the structural funds are and how they are being adapted in this new coronavirus reality. The 355 billion euro structural and cohesion funds make up the bulk of the European Union's funding and seek to reduce regional income disparities across the bloc. 54 billion euros of that has recently been redeployed to address the coronavirus crisis. The money will go towards healthcare spending like masks or hospital equipment, short-term employment schemes and even to companies so that they can pay staff. But this isn't fresh money. It's made up of either unused reserves that would otherwise go back into the EU budget or cash that is simply being shared earlier than planned. Poland's medical infrastructure is significantly underfunded and several confirmed cases are among the health workers. We visited two hospitals there to see how those on the front lines are coping. One out of six confirmed cases of coronavirus in Poland has been a healthcare professional. Malga Jota is a pulmonologist. She says there was a lack of proper protective equipment at the start of the crisis. Thanks to an initiative supported by the European Social Fund, hospitals are now getting the material they need. Being able to buy this equipment has brought us, let's say, some comfort. It's state-of-the-art, enabling us to monitor patients at their bedside. But more importantly, they're also connected to a control panel, which is far from the patient's bed, so safe for the hospital staff. This European funding is vital. Like many countries, Poland wasn't ready for such a pandemic. Ponieważ Polska, jak i też inne kraje, tak jak inne kraje, nie była przygotowana na taką skalę zjawiska. Isabella has worked in the pediatric department of Turun Hospital for 25 years. When the epidemic hit, she volunteered with her friend Elzbieta to help the staff treating patients with COVID-19. We wear these protective suits and keep them all the time when on the ward. We assume the whole ward could be infected. When we are close to patients that have tested positive for coronavirus, we use additional protection such as aprons, visors, head masks and gloves. Around 10 million euros from the European Social Fund has been reallocated to buy cleaning and protective equipment, as well as ventilators and heart monitors. The project is also supporting two temporary respite centres like this hotel, where the two nurses can stay after a long night shift. This centre is important because you really can relax after being on shift. I don't have any household duties here. Meals are prepared for us. We know that all this is temporary for us. Approximately 10 billion euros of the EU's cohesion policy, that's more than 10% of funding for 2020, is being channeled to fight the pandemic in Poland. I think that it's a lot of money and money that uh, can do a lot of good in this area, in entrepreneurs and hospitals. The money could help save half a million jobs. In this situation which we are now, we must also rethink the priorities of the cohesion policy. We believe that this policy should be as well adopted as possible to the specific situation of individual countries and the current economic situation, of course, because it's very dangerous to stay at the same level. Back to Brussels to interview a very well-known insider of the EU crisis management, the economist Thomas Wieser. He was at the heart of the emergency meetings during the Eurozone crisis and knows the system inside out. Now we find him in his hometown, Vienna. So, Mr. Wieser, many thanks for being with us. 
the EU decided to reallocate some remaining money from the structural and cohesion funds in order to address the massive challenges of, uh, and needs of this coronavirus crisis. Do you think that this cohesion policy can compensate for the lack of unity among member states? I would say that some of the largest recipients, net recipients of EU funds, have been those member states who have been calling uh, central elements of European values or European cohesion or European solidarity into question. So my instinctive uh, response would be that I see absolutely no connection, absolutely no correlation between uh, receiving very large sums out of the EU budget uh, being a very large net recipient, which is being financed uh, by other member states, and feelings of European solidarity or cohesion. That does not seem to be the case. And if I remember correctly, uh, the figures, the sums that were uh, dished out uh, to several member states uh, had no direct bearing on the severity of the economic hit that these countries were having as a consequence uh, of COVID-19. So how this EU budget should be shaped and used in order to face the new post-coronavirus reality? In my view, it should be uh, at around 2% of gross national income on an annual basis, which is uh, significantly larger than the present proposal. So the big question will be, even if we manage uh, to see a considerably larger budget, at least uh, for the coming couple of years, what will this budget deliver? Will it be predominantly grants, which are financed out of the EU budget, which are given to all countries, of course, but especially to the hard hit? And this net transfer of resources is a precondition for the post-pandemic recovery taking hold. That is the good possibility. The worst possibility would be that all of the additional headroom in the EU budget uh, is taken up uh, in order to provide loans to member states or regional entities in member states, etc., which would allow for a considerably higher sum. It would have to be repaid and as such, it would not be incurring any net cost to the EU uh, budget, barring any contingent uh, liabilities uh, which will not occur. So what is sure is that the days and months to come are quite crucial. So, Mr. Wieser, thank you very much for being with us and for your time, of course. And thanks for watching and see you soon on Euronews.